Hey everyone, welcome to or welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we will be talking all about the creative brief that we use here at Spark, including what a creative brief is, what a creative brief includes, and why we use one. Let's get started. So, what is a creative brief? By definition, a creative brief is a document made with the goal of defining all aspects of a creative piece of work, such as a print ad or a website banner. Essentially, it'll be used as a guide for the creative services being offered. Here are the reasons as to why we use creative briefs. They keep everything organized, they provide a timeline, they include a detailed scope of work, and they include a visual reference that allows for direction around style. You may be wondering, what does a creative brief usually consist of? First of all, we want to include a background of the brand, the objective of our work, the touch points, or what items we will be creating, as well as the project requirements. This is called the project overview. This allows for any new team members to be able to have an idea of what the project that we will be working on is. Next, we have the target audience. In this, we discuss the brand's primary and secondary target audiences. We will discuss their background, such as interests, age, location, etc., as well as what they would be looking for from the brand's services and how they can provide that to their customers. This section is very valuable to our research and helps us identify how we can appeal to the desired audience. From here, we transition into the competitors. This is a tool to identify who the competitors are while getting into some detail about the comparisons between the brand and its competitors. As you can see, this includes a description, location, what they do, and what the brand does better. This is where we focus on the USP, or unique selling point, of the company and what they do compared to their competitors. This helps us compare the competition and allows us to identify opportunities to differentiate the brand from everyone else. After this, we focus on the content and messaging, where we will discuss the intended message, what is the point of the project, what is the tone, typically described in at least three adjectives or more, and the intended reaction that we want the viewer to have when they see the project. This allows us to identify what the tone of the brand is, what the messaging for the project is, and the reaction that we would like to get from the viewer. This allows us to have an idea as to what would be best suitable for the brand and would match their tone. This leads us to the rough content structure. This portion of the document is used for website, graphic design, videos, presentation, and more. It could be considered one of the more important portions of the document, and it's where you will write out all of the included sections, the content that you would like to be inserted in those sections, and any notes you may have. Basically, in easier terms, it gives you a structure for the content that you are creating. We use this portion of the brief to write any notes we have on the necessary content that will be put into the project. The next part that is included in this creative brief which may just be the most important part, is the look and feel. This is where we get descriptive about the look and the tone of the project. We use this section to talk about the aesthetic of the project and also create a mood board for any references that we feel inspired by. In this section, we work with our videographers or our graphic designers to establish a clear understanding of what the project should look like. We use this to understand how we want the content to look, by discussing the style, using descriptive words for the project, as well as discussing the general aesthetic of the content. A very important part of the creative brief is the timeline. We use this portion of the brief to create a plan as to when all of the important steps of your project will be completed. This includes time for meetings, review, refining, etc. It is not required to create a day-by-day -day timeline, so we recommend basing it off of whatever works best for you. This is used to give everyone involved in the project a general feel as to how the project should be moving along and when separate tasks should be done by. It is a great way to keep track of how the process of the project is moving along in order to meet the client's desired deadline. The final part of the creative brief that is also optional is the additional considerations. This is where we include any additional notes that the client has told you in your creative brief meeting that you may consider including in the project. This is also a space to write any considerations for the client, such as that the cost of the project is subject to change and more. We use this space because it is a beneficial way to include considerations that may not have made sense being put anywhere else in the document. I hope this rundown of the creative briefs that we use here at Spark is helpful for you. Please be sure to subscribe if you're looking for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching!